Hey, it's Marty Pants. I have amazing news. The government is basically giving away months and years towards student loan forgiveness and more. Some of you will have to act to consolidate your FFEL or direct loans before April 30th, 2024 in order to access these benefits. And some of you will get it without doing anything. It can get real confusing real quickly, which is why you have me, Kate, the money librarian, here to help you figure out the world of student loans and other money stuff so you can save more, have more, and sleep well at night. If that sounds good to you, be sure to subscribe and pick up my 24 easy money moves checklist link in the description. This video is about who should be taking action for the student loan consolidation due April 30th, 2024. This has serious time constraints on it. So if you know somebody who has student loans, please send this video to them so that they don't miss out on this. In general, there are five situations where you need to take action. If any of these apply to you, please be sure to watch to the end. But because student loans are so complicated, even if these don't apply to you, this still may be useful for you to watch. If you have any commercially held FFEL loans, if you're going for public service loan forgiveness and have FFEL loans, if you are going for PSLF or IDR forgiveness, that's the one where you get forgiveness for being on an income-driven repayment plan, and you have loans with different amounts of qualifying months in repayment, like if you've been paying off one loan for 60 months and another loan for 100 months, and if you have direct loans with different amounts of months in repayment. If you are in any of those five situations, this video is required viewing for you. But yay, we get to spend some time together. So this is informational and educational. I've done my best, but can't guarantee this is all accurate for you. So I've put a bunch of links in the description for you to follow after the video. So here's the tea, as the kids say. And for the rest of us, here's what's going on with student loans. The government is doing what is called the IDR recount. They're going through everyone's student loan payments and they're recounting, but they are using different rules than normal. So you could get months towards forgiveness that normally don't count towards IDR or PSLF forgiveness. There are many student loan forgiveness programs, but those are like the big ones. And so those are the ones that I'm going to be focusing on today. Income driven repayment forgiveness forgives your student loan balance after 20 or 25 years. And on the save plan, if you took out less than $12,000, you get forgiveness after 10 years, add one year for every thousand dollars above that. And they just forgive the balance because they figured you've suffered long enough, you know, stick a fork in you, you're done. The other big forgiveness program is PSLF, Public Service Loan Forgiveness. I've got a ton of videos on that. For PSLF, you have to work for the right employer, like a government or a nonprofit. You have to have the right kinds of student loans, be paying them off on the right kind of payment plan, and then you get your student loans forgiven in just 10 years. Awesome. That would have been awesome if these student loan forgiveness programs had worked as designed. A few things went wrong, so millions didn't get their IDR or PSLF forgiveness. Here are the things which absolutely boil my blood and may have happened to you. So people were put into deferment or forbearance when they shouldn't have, and those months don't count towards forgiveness. So now their forgiveness is delayed. The student loan servicers didn't bother to keep track of how long you've been in repayment. So although millions of people, seriously, millions of people were paying for 20 or 25 years and should have gotten IDR forgiveness, there was no record. So they didn't get IDR forgiveness. FFEL loans don't count for PSLF. So any payments made on those loans don't count for your required 120 payments. And then if you had FFEL loans and wanted to consolidate for PSLF, it would erase your entire payment history, making you restart that 120 payments. Payments made on the 10 year, the graduated or extended payment plans don't count for PSLF either. So to fix some of these issues, they've created the one time IDR recount. Because so much was lost to the mist of time, here's what the Department of Education said. Okay, the payment count adjustment will count time towards IDR forgiveness and PSLF forgiveness, including any months in repayment status, regardless of the payments made, loan type, or repayment plan, 12 or more months of consecutive forbearance, or 36 more months of compute cumulative forbearance, any months spent in economic hardship or military deferments in 2013 or later, any months spent in deferment with the exception of in-school deferment prior to 2013, 
and any time in repayment or deferment or forbearance, if applicable, on earlier loans before consolidation of those loans into a consolidation loan. What does all this mean for you? It means that if you were on the wrong payment plan, had the wrong kind of federal student loan, were in certain types of deferment or forgiveness, or missed some payments, all those months now count towards forgiveness. But the thing is, to get in on this and really maximize the bonkers benefits, you might need to take an extra step of consolidating your loans. And now my cat needs to come in. Odin wanted to say hi. Say hi to the nice people, Odin. Let's make sure we're on the same page with some terminology. Get it? Same page? Librarian? <laughs> Consolidating your student loans means you take some or all of your student loans and you put them together into one shiny new loan. A lot of people graduate with over a dozen loans, which is just a lot to keep track of. Consolidating makes it easier to keep track of everything, but it is by no means simple. All those different loans may have different interest rates with different payment histories and different loans come with different benefits, like Parent PLUS loans have very different benefits than direct loans. So consolidation gets real complicated real fast and can have some very real consequences on your wallet. If it feels overwhelming or confusing, welcome to my world. I have spent so many hours researching this because it gets real weedy real quick. But I got you. Don't worry. So why should you take that extra step and consolidate? Because the absolutely bonkers thing is that if you consolidate before April 30th for loans whose repayment period overlaps, they just take the higher amount and apply it to all of your loans, meaning you could take years off your loans by consolidating them together so that you get the higher payment count from the Department of Education. Quote, assuming your repayment history overlaps for each loan, the consolidation loan will be created with the longest amount of time in repayment of the loans that were consolidated. For example, say you had 50 months of time in repayment on one subsidized Stafford loan, which is an FFEL loan, and 100 months of time in repayment on another subsidized Stafford loan. If you consolidated those loans, you would receive credit for 100 months of payments on the new direct consolidation loan. You would take 50. 50 payments off of that loan. That is over four years you wouldn't need to pay. And you're like, okay, well, what if they don't overlap? Even better. Again, from the Department of Education, if your repayment history does not overlap for each loan, the consolidation loan may be credited with more time in repayment than the loan with the longest amount of time in repayment. Using the same example above, if the loan with 50 months of time in repayment included January 2017 in repayment status, but the loan with 100 months did not. The resulting consolidation loan might be credited with 101 months of payments. This can occur where borrowers relied on different repayment, forbearance, or deferment options on different loans for the same period. Okay, here are the situations to consider consolidation. This is not comprehensive, no matter what kind of loans you have. If you have multiple student loans with different payment histories and are going for income-driven repayment forgiveness or public service loan forgiveness, consolidating could cut months or years off your payments since they'll take that longest payment history. If you have FFEL loans and you want access to other income-driven repayment options without losing your payment history, consolidation will give you access to all four income-driven repayment options without resetting that clock. If you have FFEL loans and you're going for public service loan forgiveness, this is the time to consolidate these loans, so when you do achieve the required 120 qualifying payments, you will get PSLF, because don't forget, FFEL loans do not normally qualify for PSLF. So if you have commercially managed FFEL, Perkins, or Health Education Assistant loans, the Department of Education actually encourages you to consolidate so you can get the full benefits of the payment count adjustment. That is, more repayment options without losing your payment history. If you have FFEL loans not held by the Department of Education and were in periods of deferment or forbearance, like if they put you into forbearance when they shouldn't have for 15 months in a row, consolidating may get those months back so they now count towards IDR or PSLF forgiveness. This is a great opportunity to move them from a commercially held lender 
to the Department of Education without losing your payment history. I just don't trust the student loan servicers. And it's due to decades of them uh, actually mishandling student loan accounts. Um, that's why I don't trust them. So it sounds promising. Great. If this could work for you, keep watching through to the end as there are important details to know. Consolidation isn't right for everyone. It changes a lot about your loans. Remember, you are taking your old loans and turning them into something new. So it will change your interest rate. It'll change your months in repayment. It could erase some history you later find out that you need. It might get rid of a benefit from a particular type of student loan that you were depending on and didn't realize this new type of student loan doesn't come with that benefit. This is why I say speak with someone at the Department of Education to find out if it's right for you before you make any moves. When not to consolidate, and this is by no means comprehensive, but these are the big situations when it's like, maybe consolidation is not the move for you. If you would lose benefits that you're depending on with your student loans, then probably consolidation is not right for you. For example, if you have Perkins loans and are going for Perkins loans cancellation, consolidating your loans will mean you no longer have Perkins loans and won't be able to get this type of student loan cancellation, which happens after five years. If you're going for public service loan forgiveness and have periods of deferment while you worked for a qualifying organization, that would not get counted in this IDR recount. There is actually a PSLF buyback program, and if you consolidate, you won't be able to buy back those months at time of recording since you'd erase that history. See my link on the PSLF buyback program for more details. It is possible that consolidating could create a much higher monthly cost for you. Speak with someone at the Department of Education to find out if this would happen to you. And if you have Parent PLUS loans, as well as your own student loans from when you went to school, beware consolidating all of these loans together as everything will then be subject to Parent PLUS loan rules, which don't have nearly the flexibility of direct loans. You can still consolidate, just make sure to keep all your Parent PLUS loans in like one bucket over there and then all the other loans in another bucket quarantine the Parent PLUS loans. If you're interested in consolidating your student loans, here are your next steps. First off, be sure you know what kind of loans you have and who holds them. To do this, log on to studentaid.gov, go to Loan Breakdown, and then hit Loans to see a list of the loans you've received. If a loan has FFEL at the front of its listing, it is an FFEL loan. If you're not sure who holds your loans, like if a commercial bank or the Department of Education has your loans, and that is a very important distinction, in studentaid.gov, you can head over to the My Loan Servicers section of your dashboard. If the servicer name starts with Ed, E-D, you know, like Mr. Ed the Talking Horse, your loan is held by the Department of Education. If not, it's commercially held. Second, Weigh the pros and cons of consolidation. Like, know why you're doing this. Don't do this just because there's some deadline and you're like, some librarian on YouTube told me to consolidate. I did not. I did no such thing. Know why you want to consolidate. What benefit are you aiming for? Number three, call the Department of Education. Tell them why you're considering consolidating and ask them about what you will gain and what you will lose by consolidating. Ask them about what your monthly payment will look like if you consolidate. Ask all the questions. I want you to feel comfortable doing this. Since they have access to your loan history, they will be able to help you out a lot more than me. I can imagine the comments already. Um, but you are welcome to ask me questions in the comments. I'll do my best to answer. Just know uh, probably a lot of my answers are going to be, yeah, you got to call the Department of Education. <laughs> and then number four, once you've done all your due diligence, then you can go consolidate at studentaid.gov, fill in the consolidation paperwork. It takes about a half an hour. I've put the link in the description. Here are some things you need to know before you consolidate. Since I don't want anybody to have a heart attack uh, after you consolidate, you got to know this. Consolidating will reset your payment history to zero. So don't worry. That happens to everybody. Don't have a heart attack. Trust the process. Give it time. It should just take a couple months to iron out. They say it'll definitely be done by the end of 2024. So, okay, we'll see what happens. Oh, and I want to thank one of my viewers and share their experience with you. Dumpster Cheese, fabulous name, who shared their experience that they tried to consolidate and apply for save at the same time, but then that actually nullified their save application. So Dumpster Cheese recommended consolidate first, then apply for save. And that makes sense to me. Consolidate first, then apply for a payment program. Again, 
the Department of Education will be able to answer all of your questions. If you think this is right for you, please do this now. I know you have until April 30th, which is only two months away, but don't wait. The Department of Education is absolutely overloaded. If you call them today, you will still be on hold for a very long time. And by the end of April, they're going to have an absolute flood of applicants. So if you need to speak with someone, if you wait to do this until April, when everybody else is calling, you might not be able to get the support you need. So either you will miss out on this opportunity or maybe you will take this opportunity, not realizing that maybe you shouldn't. So like bad news bears, just do this as soon as you are able to. Because the thing is, if you consolidate after April 30th, well, if you have FFEL or Perkins loans, you can't get credit for past periods of payment towards forgiveness for IDR or PSLF. You will reset the clock and lose years of payment history if you have those types of loans. Then if you have loans with different counts, like maybe you have all direct loans, but you've got everywhere from like 10 counts to 100, you're going to get a weighted average of the underlying loan counts, not the longest period. Hey, if you know someone paying student loans, do them a solid, send them this video. It could be life changing. Check the description if there are updates. I will do my best to list them down there or to uh, link to another video with updates. The rules change all the time, so there might be updates after time of filming. Let me know in the comments if this was useful or whatever questions you have for me. Our all-knowing googly overlord thinks this video right here is just amazing for you, so give that a watch. Cheers. I wore my cute Pac-Man shirt just for you.